gathering up all those details and kind of putting them in order. That feels really kind of good for the other person because it helps them to make sense of what is maybe feeling quite overwhelming or chaotic or a lot. It can feel really good for the other person. Usually you'll see we get that kind of nodding head, you know, that I always mention. That's our indication. They're sort of saying to us, yes, that's it, you know? And then we know we're kind of, we're, we're getting somewhere with our reflection. So we were working on that kind of being present and those good listening skills and that demeanor that we try to use to let someone know we're hearing them and listening to them. And we talked about presence, attunement, and resonance. And we know by the time we make our way to resonance, which is really hard work, by the way, there's a whole process that kind of comes with that. By the time we get to resonance, we're ready sort of to say something that reflects the person back. So now we got to get stuck into that reflection kind of thing. What is that? What's the kind of stuff we say by the time we get to that point? Okay. Reflection skills are really deceptively simple, very powerful, deceptively simple. And this is just how we mirror the other person. We show them back what we're seeing and what we're hearing, you know? Okay. And this lets them know that we're placing really great value in trying to understand their perspectives, their feelings, their stories. We've touched a tiny bit on these before, but let's dig into these a little bit more. So these are skills like, firstly, uh, restating, right? So with restating, all we're actually doing here is repeating back an important word or a phrase that the person has used so they know we get it, right? So if the person we are listening to says, ever since I started this medication, I'm so fuzzy headed. I can't think it's driving me nuts, right? They're having a feeling there and they're telling us something. We're kind of just simply repeating back. Okay. So you're feeling really fuzzy headed. That's very annoying, right? We're repeating it back. It's as simple as that. Alternatively, and sometimes much more powerfully, actually, we might simply repeat a single word or a single phrase that someone has used just to allow them the space to really sit with what they've said, to really let it sort of sit and sort of let them feel that for a minute, right? So if the person were to say to us, you know, I was just shell-shocked after that, it really did me in, okay. And we might be listening to that and as we're listening and hearing that, we might notice the way that they emphasized it really did me in. That might be the piece that lands with you for some reason. And so then you might make the decision to reflect that back and kind of say, okay, it really did you in. And then we leave that with them so that they can really sort of sit with it for a minute, right? We repeat it back just to show them that feeling of being done in, okay? Now, another simple form of reflection that we use is summarizing. This is a big one if you're listening to someone's stories um, or their, you know, their life story work for sure. So if someone is bringing in a story with lots of details, lots of bits to it, and uh, maybe some of these details could even be a little bit all over the place or, you know, a little bit disjointed or there's a lot coming there in at once, right? Sometimes what we do to let the other person know we're listening is we help them to gather all of these up and we kind of put them in the correct sequence, right? And then they know we're really listening. So it also helps to sort of make sense of the chronological kind of nature of the story. So we're saying things like, okay, so your medicine was changed and then you were feeling kind of sick, but then this was all sort of happening at the same time as your wife got sick you were trying really hard to mind her and then you didn't really even notice that your sickness was kind of getting worse and you ended up in hospital, right? Gathering up all those details and kind of putting them in order. That feels really kind of good for the other person because it helps them to make sense of what is maybe feeling quite overwhelming or chaotic or a lot. It can feel really good for the other person. Usually you'll see we get that kind of nodding head, you know, that I always mention. That's our indication. They're sort of saying to us, yes, that's it, you know? And then we know we're kind of, we're, we're getting somewhere with our reflection. Okay. Now, another really important one um, are things like acknowledging, 
validating, affirming. So this is when we sort of say something simply like, gosh, that was really hard, right? That's validating. We're validating that emotional experience or maybe something like, um, that was, that was really unfair, you know? And they kind of go, yeah, that was unfair. Maybe it's, uh, there's a possibility we might be the first person that is saying to this person, that was really unfair. Life moves very fast with lots going on. You know, so when we finally take the time to sort of slow down and think about something or feel it, sometimes simple things are really powerful. That could be the first time someone has said to this person, wow, let's slow down. That was unfair, wasn't it? Okay, so little things, again, make a really big difference. And uh, sometimes we're validating wonderful things and positive things. And we're saying things like, that must have been a really exciting day. You know, again, just acknowledging those emotions. And I think that um, uh, something that's also really important is affirming. And this is when we don't do a lot of for some reason. I'm not sure why we forget to do this one, but this is when we kind of say, um, well done, you know, or that's impressive or, you know, human being to human being, fair play for that because that was hard. That was good. You did a good job there. That's what we're sort of trying to communicate. And, you know, we're not doing that in a trite way. We're being authentic, you know, and people will always know the difference, you know, so be earnest. Don't say it unless you mean it, you know, because they will know. But I think really this is when we're saying, wow, that's impressive. And I don't think we probably do this enough. I don't think we communicate this enough to uh, each other. I regularly find um, that if I'm really listening, people are a lot more impressive than they understand and that most people know. And then finally, uh, one very simple and equally powerful way of reflecting is just to mirror the other person's body language or their facial expression. So if someone kind of makes like an irritable face or something and you sort of show that back, you, you mirror that back and show them, Usually that will be met with some kind of appreciation, uh, if not maybe a laugh or a bit of a, you know, a funny kind of response. People love to see their own body language mirrored back. You know, it's a real strong and powerful form of mirroring if it's appropriate to what they're speaking about. So those are all a few uh, simple but really helpful ways of um, using reflection. 